and I give now the floor to the distinguished representative of Continental Network on Indigenous Women of the Americas. Uh, you have the floor, madam. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I address this body on behalf of 23 national indigenous women's organizations throughout 19 countries, which make up the continental network of indigenous women of the Americas. We make the following recommendations on item one, implementation of the rights of indigenous peoples. First, as noted in the mandate of the special rapporteur on the violence against women, we recall that violence against indigenous women constitutes a violation of human rights and fundamental freedoms of women and violence against women impairs or nullifies their enjoyment of those rights and freedoms. As affirmed in the mandate of the Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, we note that to effectively address violence against Indigenous Peoples, it must be understood not as pathology of individual perpetrators and victims, but as human rights violations of near universal scope which is mediated in each case by social conditions and specific histories. Given the alarming and unresolved rates of violence that indigenous women experience worldwide due to the intersectional factors of race, ethnicity, gender, and class discrimination, among other factors, we call on the Human Rights Council to establish and appoint a special rapporteur on all forms of violence against indigenous women to examine ways and means of overcoming existing obstacles to the full and effective protection of the rights of indigenous women. Two, we call for the creation of a monitoring mechanism for the implementation of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Noting that there are gaps between international developments in the field of indigenous international law and its practical implementation and the lack of consistent reporting by states we draw your attention to the 13th session of the Permanent Forum study on the optional protocol. This study provides evidence-based research that can inform this body on the elaboration of a monitoring mechanism, which may build and strengthen the current UN mechanisms in place to protect and promote the rights of indigenous peoples. Three, Highlighting the wide disparate terminologies adopted by states in their reference of indigenous peoples, we call for the need to develop a mainstreaming strategy to ensure the consistent use of the term of indigenous peoples in line with the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples in all areas of work within the UN system, but also at the national level, whenever dealing with issues and rights of indigenous peoples. This is of vital importance in upholding the implementation of the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Four, recognizing the historic advances in the increased participation and leadership roles of Indigenous Peoples within the UN system, we highlight that of particularly of Indigenous women and that, and highlight that much work remains to ensure our full and meaningful participation in decisions that directly affect our lives. Therefore, we call for the need to develop a mainstreaming strategy to ensure the consistent and increased attention to indigenous women's perspectives, issues, and the goals of gender equality in the work of the UN. Of the UN. This is of vital importance in upholding the implementation of Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Lastly, we, we support the call for a third decade on indigenous peoples. Thank you.